Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Family Matters again for tonight, the 7th of September. Um, tonight with us, we have Glenn Davies again for the part two of technology and internet safety. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, so tonight, what we're talking about is uh, the dangers of technology and how to fight back. And uh, last week, Glenn talked about the dangers technology poses to our relationships with God and to each other. And this week, we're going to be discussing um, the danger technology poses for our separation from the world. And then Glenn's going to give us some really practical ways of keeping ourselves and our families and our children safe on the, on the internet um, and our computers even. So that, that'll be pretty good. Um, so yes, yeah, stay tuned for the, uh, for the for tonight's uh, show. And what we'll do before we start, let's let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this technology that we have to be able to talk together over the distances and and over time. And um, we thank you for the wisdom that Glenn has and for the experiences that you've given to him. And we pray that tonight you would help him to be able to share with us the wisdom that you've given to him for keeping ourselves and our families safe from the dangers that, that really creep into our, into our homes through the devices that we have. And we pray that you would help us to be able to use them well in a way that glorifies you. Please uh, guide us in what we do and say tonight and may what we think and what we say and what we do be a blessing to each other. Thank you for all your blessings through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Right, I want to do a reading, just a quick one. And this one, I think, is, a, is very appropriate for what we're going to be talking about tonight. And it comes from Philippians chapter 4. You probably know it off by heart. Probably shouldn't be reading it, really. But I will, just in case I get anything wrong. And it goes like this, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So welcome, Glenn. Thanks for joining us again tonight. Hi, good to be back. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So um, what we're, we're going to talk tonight about about our separation from the world um, and and the dangers technology poses poses about that. And and what we tend to do, I suppose, as, as followers of Christ is to avoid a lot of the things that a lot of other people do you know we don't go to the same sort of parties we don't um we, we avoid certain discussions we keep ourselves separate from um fr from different activities and things like that 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 we might not seem as see as appropriate but when we bring technology into our home we end up faced with a completely new threat don't we Oh yeah, definitely, and it's probably a bigger threat than any of those other things that you mentioned, really. And I think we mentioned it last week that it's sort of interesting that for many years Christadelphians, or many Christadelphians, would refuse to have a television in their home because of the fact that it just brought a whole lot of worldly influences in, um, and the fact that when you sit in front of a television, there's very little brain activity. You're just taking in the stream of material that the world's providing mm. um, but uh, and technology as we mentioned last week's just sort of slipped in the back door but in fact the internet and everything that comes with it is is a thousand times worse than whatever came across the public television <laughs> broadcasts um, yeah and it's so much easier to access isn't it just just yeah and it's it's in a it, sort of way i guess it's easy to access plus not always intentionally because of the way that online advertising works quite often things are inserted in front of you that you don't really want to look at but 
the, the flesh being what it is, something suddenly pops out and the flesh is tempted and then there's, you've then immediately got to, to struggle with, well, do I click on that link? Mm -hmm. um, and like that, as we all know, the, the heart of man's desperately wicked and deceitful. <laughs> We can come up with all, all sorts of excuses why we're going to click on that link. It's, oh, I wonder what that is. I wonder yep. if that's as bad as it sounds. <laughs> we don't really need to. We don't really need to click on it to find that out, do we? But it's easy for the flesh to 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 reason around why you might want to follow those inappropriate links. Um, yeah. And it's it's really they easy to mind, they set your mind whizzing as well. Like you know, they can they can make, even if you don't click on it. Yeah, that might be all you think about for the next hour or two. Yeah, just human nature being what it is, the mind chews that over, and um, yeah, then you've you, then you've got to struggle with that for whatever period of time before you can try and get it out again. Um, and it's just so easy to watch things for entertainment, mm. and a lot of things sound innocuous, but it's really hard these days to find anything that doesn't contain. Um, profanities and um, if not sexual content at least lots of innuendo uh, that there's not a lot of stuff that is really what we would call family or christian focused that the entertainment industry is secular so all of the content they produce is incredibly secular um, and, but, and we get quite desensitized don't we you know the, the more we see the more desensitized we get to um to what is inappropriate. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's that quote from Paul, isn't there, about this conscience seared with a hot iron. And a bit, yeah. I think you might have mentioned it last week, Sharon, about frog in the in the water. So you don't really notice how hot the water's getting. That's largely because your conscience is getting seared. The more stuff mm -hmm. you just keep putting through and ignoring, and it's like, oh, the rest of it's really good. I, I wasn't affected by that little bit. I mean, then you watch the next series and there's a bit more of it and yeah it, it starts sort of a downward spiral um yeah i was quite amazed a few years ago we um we we got rid of our tv oh, several years ago now and we hadn't had it for for two or three years at this stage and then we went around to someone's house and they had the tv on and it was prime time news sort of thing and you know but but there are ads on and everything and I just like having been watching that, you know, a few years previous, I was just amazed at at how much my conscience had grown back when I saw it again and went, wow, did we really have that in our home? Um, yeah. And that was just that was just prime time news, you know. Oh yeah, and even a lot of advertising is. Uh, yeah, uh, and particularly the advertising. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of innuendo and inappropriate content just in, yeah. in adverts. Um, yeah, it's, again, I think it's a, a good point for us all to sort of sit up and ask the question, is, is everything that I'm doing online really appropriate? Is it helping me develop the mind of Christ? Or is it filling my mind with a whole lot of stuff that I've got to spend a whole lot of time is it true with. and noble and honest and just and pure yeah. and lovely? Yeah. Yeah. And we mostly know the answer to that, but again, <laughs> the flesh. Can, oh, it's, I've had such a busy day, and I just need to chill out for a while. And oh, it's yeah. not so bad. Really, I'll just watch this one episode. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. And I mean, the, there's that at one one end of the spectrum. It's just that subtle. We might not see it as really problematic and offensive but deep down we know that there's some stuff in there that really isn't appropriate for a disciple of christ to be listening to or watching um, but then at the other extreme there's the internet makes available the, the absolute worst of human nature um, at your fingertips and, mm -hmm. and it lowers it lowers the barrier of entry to access that um, yeah. But really, there's, there's there's nothing new on the internet that mankind hasn't had for the last several thousand years. In, in, in Corinth, it was paraded in the streets. That's so not like the 
the internet's created something that mankind has never had. It's, it's always been there, that that um, flagrant immorality. Um, it was right back in the land of Canaan, wasn't it? Mm. But really what the internet's done, it's I think the real issue for us is it's lowered the barrier to entry to access that. You don't so have back, to go very far to find it. No, no. And, and back in the days of, Yeah. And back in the days of Corinth, you had to be willing to walk out of your front door, walk down through the market and up the hill to the temple. And in that process, you had to risk being seen by some of your brethren. Mm. So you had to want that so desperately that you were willing to be seen um, by your brethren. Um, and in past years, you had to know which particular shop might have that sort of material available and, and make the effort to actually go out of your house and again risk being seen entering one of those inappropriate shops by your brethren and then having to answer for it. Um, but what the internet's done is it's that's now available in your living room or your bedroom at the click of a button and nobody knows. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course, somebody knows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The most, the most important person in our life knows. Um, mm. But again, human nature is quite good at making excuses and talking around in circles about what is, isn't an inappropriate at any given moment in time. Yeah. Mm. But there's, 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 I mean, there's, there's plenty of scriptures which outline that there's absolutely no way things like that are appropriate in any circumstance. Yeah. Uh, regardless of what we might be able to tell ourselves in our head, scripture's very plain. It's just scripture after scripture saying you can't look at those things. Um, and of course, Christ told us, well, if you're looking at those things, you've done it. Yeah. So, so there's no excuse there either. It's not like we well we're not doing anything. Um, yes, I think we it's it's good for us all to ask the question is in what ways are we protecting ourselves from those things? Because mm. as we said last week, that it's in some cases you might be able to say that's it. I'm just cutting off my internet connection and I'm going to um, go old school and just get it completely out of my life, but a lot of us have jobs that involve it. We have um, online banking and a lot of other things. A lot of things are just going online. A lot um, of ecclesial events at the moment are online too, so yeah. yeah. Um, so we then have to ask, well, uh, what are we doing to protect ourselves and our families? Yeah, so what can because we do? Um, what, yeah. what is there for, like, for the average family um, who's got well, you know, we've got we've got a main device which we're using at the moment, um, but you know, the kids have got devices and there's phones and you know, what, yeah. So what can we do uh, to to help with that? Um, well, just before I show you a couple of things, I was just going to say that the like, obviously the ultimate thing we need to do is develop our conscience, um, because ultimately we should have our conscience to the point where we know. That we can't be looking at those things and <clears throat> I guess it's the same with all things in Christ it's not a matter of thinking about it as a law I can't look at that those things because there's a law that says I can't training a conscience to say I can't look at those things because they're an abomination to my heavenly father mm. and I, I don't want to upset him and I see those as the same abomination that he says sees them at Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. So have you got any um, tips on how we can help really promote that conscience, how we can really help grow it? Um, uh, there's uh, a sheet that I've sent to Robert, which summarises some of the things I'll look at tonight, which at the yep. end it basically lists a whole lot of scriptures. I think one of the best ways is just memorizing some of those. Getting some so of the scriptures inside yeah, you. When yeah. You are, yeah, when you are confronted with something, you can do what Christ did and actually just quote the scripture, which refutes it. Rather than trying to battle with your own willpower, actually use yeah. God's word.
to battle the temptation. And the best way to do that is if we've committed to memory some of the appropriate scriptures. Um, but uh, as well as that's, that's a really critical part of it. Um, but because human nature is what it is, I think we're also, we should be taking steps to do what we can to at least stop that really inappropriate material actually entering our houses, um, especially for our children's sake. Um, because obviously they they don't they haven't had time to develop their conscience. You obviously need to work with children at times when it's appropriate to to help them with all things know what's right and what's wrong. But um, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't build your house next to the the temple of um, Aphrodite. No and leave the door open for your children to wander in. <laughs> That's yeah. a bit the same yeah. with, with the internet. Why would you let, why would you have a completely unfiltered internet connection into your house that your children had access to? Yeah. Um, but but no, nothing's foolproof. <laughs> so you can take all sorts of steps to, to try and stop it, but you, you then, it's the different layers. You've got your, you've built your wall to try and keep out what you can. And then on top of that, Build the conscience. Yeah. Because so of course, should we, our, with, should we start with safe searches? Yeah. So hang on, let me see if I can share my screen. And I'll, um, I'll let you share the screen. Oh, okay. Uh, I, th I think the, I think the thing is, you know, a lot of us are, are really, um, you know, we we get the internet, we get a computer, or a laptop, or a phone, or something like that and you connect it to the internet because we've all got fiber these days uh you got as much access as you like anytime you like um and if you you know you can you can go and buy your norton antivirus or whatever it is but they cost a hang of a lot of money yeah and same with same with you know filters and things like that i mean i, I was this is this has been my thoughts you know it's like Sure, that yeah, sure we could get something like that, but it's gonna cost cost the earth to get it or to keep it and to keep it updated and all that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I think that's what what well, as far as I'm concerned, you know, that would be one of that's one of the things that I I would struggle with. <laughs> There's a comment in the uh, chat box. I thought Glenn was a technology buff. <laughs> oh, there yeah. we go, he something. is a technology yeah. buff. <laughs> He's got it. Yeah. So um, there's a couple of simple things that you can just do if you're just wanting to avoid having inappropriate stuff come up in like your Google search results. Um, and if you go to Google and just search for something, there's this little settings option. And there's an option to turn on safe search. And once you've done that, it just appears over on the right here saying safe search is on. And what that does is Google does its best to filter out really inappropriate adult material from your search results. Cool. So at a really basic level, everybody should basically do that. Is on whatever web browser you're using, click on the Google settings and turn safe search on. Um, there's no, I have it on permanently and I've never not been able to find something. So there's no reason why you shouldn't have it turned on um, just as a, that a very first level of defense to, to avoid being tempted by anything inappropriate coming up. So once because you've I'm, got it once you've got it turned on, does that just stay on? Yeah, it stays on. Um it stays sort of, on unless you turn it off. Yep. And you can yep. turn it off if you if you want, but like I say, I've had it on permanently for the last couple of years and never never needed it. Never need to turn no. it off each one. Yeah. And because um I mean, unfortunately, there are some what you might think are reasonably innocuous words that you're searching for, for which the English language being what it is, can have some completely unknown meanings. And at least having that turned on means you don't inadvertently get things in front of you that you really didn't, didn't want to see. Yep. And YouTube has a similar option. This is the sort of exciting stuff you watch on YouTube if you're a computer developer. Um, 
And if you if you click on the little icon at the top and scroll down the bottom again, there's a restricted mode, which you can, can you do that on. again. It's quite small for the rest of us. All oh, right. Yeah, so it's just this little menu that pops up when you click on your photo in the top right. Oh yeah. And down at the very bottom, there's this restricted mode, um, okay. which again Google try and do their best to keep inappropriate stuff away from you. But it's not, again, it's not foolproof. Um, of course, the people that want to get their inappropriate stuff in front of people, it's a bit of a game of cat and mouse. <laughs> it's like, well, what is it? How can we disguise our stuff so that Google won't think it's inappropriate? Mm. So that, that's just a couple of really simple little things that really everybody should do if you're using the internet and you're using YouTube to just that, at least that that's one level of defense, that's sort of one row of bricks in your wall. Um, yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That's really now, useful things to know. Now, those things are things that you can turn on to yourself, but obviously if you've got children and obviously if you've got teenagers, it's not gonna be hard for them to just turn that back off again. Um, when they're looking for stuff they know mum and dad don't really want them looking at. Um, and, and really the only way around that is um, installing some software on each of the devices which actually lock them down. Um, for younger children where you know that they're not going to tamper with it, um, there are some cheaper and free options. And I'm just looking for my document here. Um, so the education department in New Zealand actually provides a free filtering service called Switch On Safety. Um, and the, the address for this will be in the, the handout that Robert's got to send out to everybody. Yep. So what this does, it enables you on any device to, to set up a, a filter which blocks out inappropriate content. So rather than just blocking the search results page, which Google does, um, which that's a good thing to turn on because so you don't inadvertently get stuff. But of course, if you know the address for a particular website, you can just type it in the address bar. You don't need to search for it. In which case, oh, yeah. Google's, Google's safe search won't stop that. Um, so this, this filter will mean that if you type in an appropriate an, an inappropriate web address it will just come bring up a web page saying sorry that page is blocked you're not allowed to access it okay so um, who, and, um, who sorts that out who, who uh, so it's and what's not uh they there's a couple of um what they call blacklists that are maintained by various people so they, they, they have a massive list of thousands of website addresses and they categorize them based on why they may or may not be appropriate and inappropriate. So for this one, because it's it's for ch designed for children, it, it blocks not only sexual content, but also um, gambling and uh, alcohol, drugs. So it does a reasonably good job of, of blocking access to content that's inappropriate for school aged children. Yep. For Does this one, you need. Ads? Does that block ads that pop up as well? Uh, no, no. No. Uh, just wondering. Yeah, <laughs> it this, this basically just blocks a few. Um, it will block some ads if they're coming from a a website address that's been blacklisted. Yep. Yeah. And the, there's instructions on how to set it up for each of your different devices which is, it's a little bit technical, but it's got screenshots showing you how to, how you would go about doing it. Um, but yeah, you need to need to do it on each device that's within the household. Um, but, but it works for Android phones and iPads and iPhones. But there is also another option which does something similar. Um, called OpenDNS, which you can set up your internet router to use. 
is this open DNS family shield. So you tell your internet router to always go to this service whenever anybody requests anything through the router. So you don't have to go to each device in your house and set it up. Anybody that connects to your Wi-Fi gets everything filtered. All oh, right. Yeah. So even if you have a visit, if somebody comes and visits for a week and says, "Can I use your Wi-Fi?" and you give them the details, they also everything they get through your Wi-Fi gets gets passed through the right. filter. Awesome. Uh, and again, it's there's there's details here about how to set it up. This one's slightly more technical because you've got to know how to connect into your home Wi-Fi router and change some of the settings. Um, I th think I talked with you, Robert, a, a couple of weeks ago about um, when you get down to this level, it's not necessarily something everybody wants to be messing around with. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, and maybe each ecclesia needs to look at who the technical people are in their ecclesia that can help families set this sort of thing up. Um, that's, and it's probably something that arranging brothers could look at. Most ecclesias, unless they're really small, will have one. They'll have at least one geek. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always yeah. one geek in ecclesia, so it's a matter of identifying who that person is and saying, "Hey, do you mind helping families set this up if they if they want somebody to help them with it?" Yeah, that would. That's a really good idea. Mm. Yeah. Um, and actually, you know, if, if there is any ABs listening, not just Bakaranga, but anywhere else, like take that idea back and and discuss it at your next meeting and see if you can sort something out. That would be really good. Yeah, because be it's really helpful for all the families that are in your ecclesia. Yeah, it's like I say, it's all right for me because it's sort of my job and I like playing around with it. But I know a lot of people, it's like, oh, it's change your um, home router's DNS settings to point to open DNS. So, uh, um, what? <laughs> well, what's a router? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, now again, this is this approach is good as a line of a, the sort of a good line of defence, particularly for adults who so you, you just want to basically block that stuff. You don't want it coming in. Um, but again, it's not foolproof, uh, specifically for a reasonably talented young fool <laughs> um, okay. to get around it. So. Like it's possible somebody that knows what they're doing can bypass it on their device. And of course, the trouble is a lot of smartphones these days come with a data plan. So you can put a filter on your home Wi-Fi network, but then all your teenager needs to do is turn off the Wi-Fi and use their data plan instead. In which case, it's completely bypassing your the home filter that you put in yep. place. Um, so really, the, if you're really wanting a good level of protection for children, you you have to start actually buying. Um, well, there's a couple of free options. There's um, depending on what devices you use, Google. If if you're all using Android devices, for instance, Google has something called um, Family Link. It's like some of the links in that document I sent are broken. I might send you a revised copy of that document, Robert, before you send okay. it out. That's it's fine. Like the links aren't working. Yeah, I'll send it out next. I'll send it out towards the end of this week anyway. Yeah. So Google has this thing called um, Family Link, which enables you as a parent to install an application on your Android phone, which controls all of your family's Android phones and enables you to turn on. Uh, filters uh, which can't be disabled on the phone without the parents overriding administrator's password okay. and and you can also you can manage which apps they install and also the amount of time that they're allowed to use on the devices so that, so that you can actually limit so you can actually limit the amount of time that's on a that your kids spend on the internet yeah, or even just on the device and the time. So you can sort of say you're allowed to use this device between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m., but not between 7 p.m. and 5 p.m. the next night. 
or however you want to, or, or you can say you're allowed to use it for an hour a day, you choose which hour, but once oh, you've used really it, cool. hour, yeah, it switches off. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, really cool. That's, that saves a lot of the monitoring as well, and the nagging and the yeah, everything yeah. else that goes on. Yeah. Yeah, well, Tessa knows all about time limiting on computers. When, <laughs> <laughs> when she was at home, we had one family computer and it had a bit of software on that gave them 30 minutes a day on it. Oh, so okay. Once you used your 30 minutes, it just logged you out. <laughs> Unless okay. you came and talked nice, nicely to Dad and said you had a homework assignment that you really needed to finish and you needed an extra 30 minutes. Right. Um, yeah. But it just it does save that monitoring and the the, the nagging and the oh I've only been on here 10 minutes <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah right yeah. Mm. yeah so that one's called family link is that right yeah and that's that works if you've got um, Android devices or Chromebooks um, so a lot of schools are requiring children to have Chromebooks which are like a little laptop and all it does is run the Chrome web browser so you can only use online applications with it oh Okay. So if your child comes home from school and says, hey, I've got to get a Chromebook, um, just remember about this family link, because with this family link, you can take control of their Chromebook and actually start dictating what, what they can see and how long they can use it for. Um, okay. Now oh, that's really cool. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And Apple have a similar thing. Um, if you can afford to have all your kids on iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> Not us, but um, anyway. Yeah, so there's there's a parental controls thing for iPhones, iPads. So again, you can set content and restrictions on um, the amount of screen time, etc. And how the device is filtered and what apps they can and can't install. Um, so it's just worth remembering when, for whatever reason, you have to buy your child a device. Yet it's it's not completely in their control. Um, the, unfortunately, the manufacturers of these devices have made it possible for parents to to control their children's devices. Um, so you're not you're yeah. not completely at a, at a loss. There's, there are tools that enable you to do it, um, but there are. Um, There's one reasonably cheap option which you have to pay for, which enables you to control all of the kids' devices plus um, the home computers and the internet connection. I, I had a bit of a look around, and this is by far the, the cheapest one, and it comes reasonably highly rated in a PC magazine review. Is that um, New Zealand dollars? 1995? Uh, yeah, that's New Zealand dollars. That's that's per year. Okay, that's, that's not bad. That's really good. Yeah, and that's just for that's for an unlimited number of devices. So, um, yeah, like so I've I've had a look around, and this seems by far the best option at the moment if you're wanting to install something on all of the devices in the house and have really good control over it. And again, you can manage the the time that each each person's allowed. So each person in the family has an account. So the 15 year old might get two hours a day, but the 10 year old only gets an hour a day. So you can manage it based on the, the individual children and the ages. Okay. Um, wow, that's a great idea. What was that one called again? Uh, Kaspersky Safe Kids. Kaspersky, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's, it, this, it's a bit simpler to install because it, comes with a whole lot of documentation and a help desk and a download so you don't have to work out how to hack into your internet router or anything. Yeah. But again, some people might still find it a bit mind boggling to to install it and then work out how all the settings work. So again, it's probably helpful if there is somebody that's a bit more tech savvy to help those families that need it. Um, there is another one which was reviewed, um, the reviews were slightly better, but it's quite a bit more expensive. 
the internet's the best free parental control app. There you go. Yeah, it's sort of free as the it's free to download and install, but you really have to actually buy it. It's one of those it's, it's like a free trial rather than free free. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So for ten devices that's eighty dollars eighty seven dollars US per year. Okay, so that's about five times the price of the Yeah, so that's about one hundred and fifty dollars a year, New Zealand. It comes with a few more features, but when I looked at it, it didn't seem to do an awful lot more than the fifteen dollar one did. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, so but it is but it is another option. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, if it was me, I'd certainly be starting with the $15 one. And if it doesn't really do what you want, you've only lost $15. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. Before yeah. you fork out the 150 Yes. Um, yeah. So does that mean that you have to keep buying it each year? Yeah, these are all like a subscri yearly subscription. Right, okay. But, like $15 a year to... to Start to keep your kids safe on the internet at home. Does that mean that they, they they send you a uh, a reminder that your that your time is almost um, up and that you'll need to renew it? Oh, I'd imagine most of these things you put your credit card in and buy it, and they'll just automatically charge your credit card unless you tell them not to. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's how most of these things tend to work. It's like give us your credit card number and we'll bill you indefinitely until you tell us not to. Yeah. Okay, right. Yep. Yeah. 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 And probably if you're if you've if you've got a younger family and you're wanting to provide some really solid protection on your the devices, that's probably the route to go down. Is yeah. one of those software because the advantage of that is it's a bit of software that's installed on the device, so it's not just limited to your home. So if your child takes their smartphone to McDonald's and connects to the McDonald's Wi-Fi or the school or the public library Wi-Fi, all of the same blocking and filtering still applies. Okay. And it's much harder to get around it because it's a bit of software that's actually installed locally on the device. Just a technical question. Well, as technical as I get. Um, if you've got if you've got say one of those one of those programs installed on your computer plus your internet filter on your your filter on your router for instance um does that slow your computers down much uh the probably not noticeably no the, okay. the filter on the router is, um will most likely actually speed it up <laughs> oh, right. enough, okay. yeah if, if you use the open dns one um the open dns routing service is one of the fastest in the world but your local isp dns service is usually reasonably slow so like spark and, and the likes have a reasonably slow service so you can a lot of the time you can change to that filter and your it'll appear like your internet's working faster all oh, right sounds um, good but some of that software that you install on your, depending on the, the type of phone you've got, it may could impact performance a little bit. Yep. The other advantage of the software like the Kaspersky one is it it will can email reports to the parents. So you you set up your email address and you'll get a little little alerts saying who's who's been using what for how long and and also you get alerts to say um little johnny was searching for this which doesn't appear to be entirely appropriate okay, okay. great yeah okay so yeah like i said it's, if you really want to build some walls around your family it's, it's it's almost like essential that you've got some sort of software like that installed yeah mm. now yeah, you're also or, going to talk about antiviruses for a, for a Briefly, I think oh, yeah, just briefly. Week, yeah, so. yeah. the the other thing, just before I forget, um, oh, yeah. the other critical things in terms of keeping family safe is, and I know a lot of people go by this, is just don't let children have internet connected devices in their bedrooms. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's... Um, even I've heard school principals basically say that, basically say you're an idiot if you let your children, your child have an internet connected device in their bedroom. Um, so even people in the world give that advice. Um, if yep. Children have to be using internet connected devices, that devices make them do it in a public family area, um, not behind the closed door of their bedroom. Yeah. And again, it's that raising the barrier to entry a little bit again. Um, if they're going to be doing something sneaky, it's it's a bit riskier if dads might suddenly walk past and see what's on the screen or, or mum might walk past and see what they're up to. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Or brother or sister for that matter. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Your peer pressure is always good, isn't it? Peer pressure it is, is usually good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, antivirus, um, a sort of not too much up with the play. What's the latest and greatest? Because I just get mine free with my work computer, which is lucky. Um, but again, there'll be a link in the, the document will go around. Um, PC Magazine generally do a review of antivirus software. Um, so probably the best bet is to actually have a look at that and there's four of them that are editor's choice. So you can sort of have a look at those four, see what which one suits your pocket and which one suits your, the number of devices that you've got. Okay. And make decisions. If, if you picked any one of those four, then you're pretty well covered. Okay, so there that's a PC mag and I'll st again, I'll send out the link for that later in the week. Yeah. So yeah, like I say, I wouldn't like to give sort of really solid advice on which is the best virus software to have, just because it's not. There, there's, a, there's this free one called Avast, which again, there'll be a link to that. So if you're wanting something that, like if you just can't afford anything at the moment, the Avast have a free home antivirus, which is it's pretty good. Yeah. And it'll, it'll have you pretty well covered. Um, you just have to be a little bit careful when you're downloading it and installing it because they have a free one, but they're wanting you to push you up into the paid one. Yeah, we've got that one and it, it often does that. It'll say, oh, you've got a problem and um, to fix it, you'll need to pay. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, but you can use it indefinitely for free and it mostly does the job. But yep. yeah, quite often when you're installing, it's like click here to to pay now but if you scroll down there's the or con or continue for with for free for free <laughs> yeah so that's sort of the main thing with it. and and some of the antivirus software comes with filtering so that's just another thing to look for if you're oh, already right. if you're already paying for like the full norton internet security suite which is a hundred dollars or so that that has got some filtering and parental control built in Okay. So it's probably worth just having a bit of a look at what virus software you're already paying for and just see if there's any little extras that you didn't know about. Yeah. Yeah. Could just be could just be a matter of going into the settings and turning on the the internet filters. Um and, and you might be covered. But they from what I've looked at, they're not as not as comprehensive at locking down devices for children as those other two that we looked at. Okay. Yeah. So what we've seen then, basically, are um, uh, get your safe search on Google, get your safe search on YouTube. Yep. Get a filter on your devices, or or and on your router, um, and on individual computers your children's computers you can get get um filtering programs that that stop them from getting on anywhere whether they're at mcdonald's yeah. or at home or at the meeting yeah plus and, plus, um, plus they have the advantage of, of being able to manage some of your time controls as well without you having to worry about it yeah mm. yeah and then and then the antivirus as well which can also help with filtering as well depending on what package you get yep so so those are all the external ones and then internally as you mentioned before glenn 
where you have uh, building up your own um, your own internal defences. Yeah, and I, I I just went through quickly through a concordance and grabbed a whole lot of scriptures which talked about um, fornication and adultery and other inappropriate things. Yep. And you can see there's a reasonably long list. And that's so a quick list too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, it's, it's not hard to just pick one of those and, and say, well, I'm going to spend this week memorising that. And then next time you, you're, you're faced with a temptation, there's, there's a scripture there to, to um, defend it. I mean, there's, there's that great quote from Psalm 119, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. The word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Yeah. Because it's certainly much better than willpower. Because <laughs> yeah. there's, there's something about it. As soon as you've gone back to the word, you're reminding yourself that it's not your battle. God's fighting the battle. And it, in some ways, it also reminds that you, you, you that you're in God's presence. So it sort of helps the conscience kick back in when when the flesh has pushed the conscience to one side and said, oh, it'll be all right. Just click on it. Um, yeah, it certainly does help having the word inside you. And yeah, it just it, like you say, it just really strengthens the conscience um, so that, you know, you, you go, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, the, yeah, the, it really works that way. Yeah, I mean, the Job one's a great one, isn't it? I've made a covenant with my eyes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yeah, that's an awesome one. That's the great starting point. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, a lot of really good verses there to memorize. Yeah. And put into our heart. Hide them in your heart is basically what Psalm 119 is saying. Hide yeah. those verses in your heart so that when something else comes in that it doesn't like, it'll tell you. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. the internal filter. Yeah, and I think we mentioned that last week, didn't we? That part of the trouble with technology is we've got away from memorizing things. Because we think, I don't need to memorize that because I can just look it up in my online Bible when I need to find it. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But your online Bible is not necessarily there at the, the, that moment of temptation when you really need that on hand. That's true. And your online Bible is not going to develop your conscience for you. <laughs> no. No, and and generally when you're in that moment of temptation, you're not looking for your online Bible anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's yes. a pop-up filter. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Not a filter you have to go look for. <laughs> yeah. Um, hang on, I'll just stop sharing my screen again. I think that's everything. Okay. Oh, wanted, that's yeah. that's that's an amazing amount of stuff, Glenn. We really thank you for your your research and and sharing that with us. Oh, that's right, no problem. It's a few years especially worth. For the, of... Especially for those of us who are um, not um, savvy and uh, with technology at all, it's really helpful to yeah. Um, yeah, just to have someone talk us through that and and hopefully be able to find people that might be able to be prepared to help us out in practical ways as well. Yeah, and for some people tonight, it's probably a bit sort of mind-boggling, but it might just, when you come to need it, you'll remember, oh, that's right. Somebody said something about that. Yeah. Or for other yeah. people, you might be able to just, once with, this is finished tonight, you can go and turn Google Safe Search on. It's pretty easy. Yeah. It's, mm. I mean, it's done and dusted. Yeah. That's first step, and, yeah. And again, yeah. we'll send those those out on the email. If you're getting the, if you're getting the emails, you'll get them. Um, if you're not getting the, the Family Matters emails, just email me at robert at thinkythings.com. And um, I will send you those emails. Uh, yeah, just say just say I want the Family Matters emails, and I'll send that one to you with all those links in it. Um, and so yeah, the links and yeah, whatever else you need. So yeah, thank you for that. That's all right. Just the other thing that, I've, just from an ecclesial point of view. Um, I think it's sort of important that we acknowledge that people can struggle with accessing inappropriate material on the internet and that it's it's not like they're somehow way more unclean and un, 
spiritual unfaithful than we are. It's just that they're suffering from the same thing that's always mankind has always suffered from. Um, it's sort of easy to to be a bit judgmental and say, well, how could they possibly be looking at that stuff? Um, but if, if you set yourself up with that attitude, then you're going to have to say the same thing to David when you meet him in the kingdom. How could you possibly have been up on the roof looking at Bathsheba, David? That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, no sense, then. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we need to acknowledge that it, it does happen. People fall into temptation. People sin. They struggle. Um, and we need to be, ecclesias need to be places where people that have that problem know that this, if they need it, there's somebody that they can actually go and talk to about it without fear of condemnation and um, being cut off. Yeah. Um, and it's just because of the age that we live in, it is it, it is going to be a problem in ecclesias and the problems in families. So we just need to acknowledge that it is there. And, and, and I mean, part of it, is that if you read a lot of the literature online, it's, it's the world sees it as an addiction much like alcoholism and, and gambling. It's very much that, that way, yeah. Yeah, so we yep. need to be really considerate of brethren that may have fallen in this way and actually know, know the, the ways that there are to actually try and help people out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's, yeah. And, and, and it's... it's we just need to be really mindful, particularly of young people, and, and also the fact that it's not. We might immediately think, "Oh, that's just that's a young man's issue." Um, that's an issue for brethren, male and female, full stop. And we just need to be really conscious and aware of of the dangers and being available to actually help people when they need it, rather than yeah. judging and condemning them. Yeah, no, yeah, that's a that's a fantastic point. Really appreciate you bringing that out. Yeah. Okay, and thank you so much again. Um, it's been it's been really good the last two weeks having you on. Uh, we've oh, really right. enjoyed it. Yeah. We've learned a hang of a lot because awful, we're not awful lot. we're not that technology <laughs> <laughs> orientated. So yeah, we've learned a hang of a lot from from uh, talking to you. And yeah, I'm sure, been, and I know, been, and I know from the feedback that we had from last week, a lot of other people have too. So really, really useful. Yeah, really it's helpful. Good. And hopefully, it just sparks some conversations within ecclesias and families and within groups of people to say, "Hey, let's let's just stand back and have a look at what we're doing here and make some conscious decisions." I think the yeah. last yeah. five or so years, we've just unconsciously moved in a certain direction. Hopefully yep. people now say, oh, it's actually now let, let's take stock. We're doing this and this is why we're doing it. We've got a clear understanding of, of, of what what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Let's 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 fight back for our um spiritual um health. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, next week we're taking a break. Um and in the following week. Darren and Josie Horrell will be, be hosting the show and um, they'll have some guests. Um, would that be Robert and Sharon Prince? And they're going to be talking about burnout. Um, and then on the 28th of September, we'll have another break. On the 5th of October, we'll have another topic, which will be very much related to what uh, Ben's been leading us towards tonight. Uh, guard your heart. And uh, Jeff Watson is going to be talking about that from um, uh, from Australia. And then we have an unconfirmed one. And then on the 2nd of November, again, just following on from what we've been doing tonight, um, Brother Gary Steele is going to be talking to us or discussing pornography with us. So um, that'll be another another really important topic. So yeah, those are those are some of the things coming up. I will keep you informed of that on the email as well. So Glenn, just wondering, would you mind closing with a prayer? Uh, yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. Loving Father in the heavens above us, once more we praise thee. We do pray earnestly for that day when thy son will return. 
and all of man's evil and wickedness might be swept away and replaced with thy glorious kingdom. As we await that time, Father, we pray that thou would help us that we might walk in thy ways, that we might see how we need to separate ourselves from the things of this world, that we might be a holy people unto thee. We pray that thou would help us in this, and we pray that thou would help us to keep not, our, not only ourselves, but our family safe from the things of this world, that there might be faith in the earth when thy son doth return. We ask these things, and we give all thanks and praise to thee, especially for this time we've had tonight around thy word with those of like precious faith. And we thank thee for these blessings and give all glory to thee through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.